on the chorus. We're going to have the instruments drop out, and we're going to lift up our voices. Amen? Amen. Let's sing on verse 4. remain standing as we open in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for that song. Lord, we just listened to the words, and, and I pray that everyone here today, Lord, can say that they're saved, but we know that that's not the case. So, Lord, I pray that anyone today who don't know you, Lord, I pray that they give their hearts to you, give their lives to you. Lord, make that decision, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for a church Lord, that preaches and teaches the Bible and the gospel, the old-fashioned way. Lord, we thank you for it. Lord, I ask you, Lord, just to convict our hearts. Lord, those who are uh, saved, Lord, just continue to edify us. And for anybody, Lord, today that don't know you, Lord, I pray the power of your word, Lord, just change their lives forever. Lord, so we thank you, give you the power, pastor, the power to preach and teach your word. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you just continue to bless this church. But, Lord, most importantly, Lord, we pray Lord, that you work in each one of our hearts today through your power, through your grace, through your mercy. We thank you. And all these things I ask in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to dismiss the teen boys and the teen girls Sunday school class. Teen boys, you can actually come this way. Is there a teen girls? Teen boys is, is going this way with Mr. Morris, and teen girls are going downstairs in the basement. We're going to move forward to our books of the Bible. We're going to say it all together, starting with the Old Testament. And then we're going to go to the New Testament, say it all together as well. Let's start with the Old, shall we? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Job, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. On to the New Testament, starting with Matthew. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd 3rd John, Jude, and Revelations. Amen. All righty. We're going to move on to our verse of the week. Verse of the week is coming from that New Testament, the first book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 28. So you can repeat after me first. We'll say it all together, and we'll see if we have a couple people that can say it from memory. Let's repeat after me first. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. All righty, then all together. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon a woman. Whosoever looketh upon a woman. 
to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. And do we have anyone here? I can say that verse from memory this morning. Anyone else this morning? Yes, I'm sorry. That sound right to me. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else this morning? may not be doing it for points, but it's still good to memorize it. Amen? Amen. 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 Yes, brother. Mm, not quite. That's not the King James version, at least. <laughs> Amen. Good try, though. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, got one more back there. Amen. All righty. Let's be ready for it tonight. We should be having our verse journal review tonight so be ready and prepare for that as we move on to our offerings let's double check our cell phones and any electronics that may go off during the service we do not want any distractions in God's house this morning ushers you can come forward and Mr. Young if you can pray for the offering this morning That was a little different having a silent offering time. <laughs> Amen. We're going to move forward as we remember our missions, that those ones that we support and those that we support through prayer. Amen. And let's see, we're going to have Mr. Murray, if you could pray for our missions this morning.
at this time, we would like to pray for Chicago preachers that God would send some to help us in this endeavor. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we just um, have a privilege just to gather into your house today. Lord, the liberty that we have to hear your word being preached. Lord, we continue to pray for preachers in Chicago, in our own city. Lord, Chicago is in desperate need of the gospel. There's no one that doesn't need you. Lord, so many people are lost. So many people don't even know your name. And Lord, we want more preachers, preachers of your word, preachers of the gospel to go forth boldly to proclaim your name. Lord, boldly to see your kingdom advance. Lord, your kingdom grown and for your glory. Lord, I pray that you would help more men, Lord, just to respond to your calling of being a preacher here in this city. Lord, I pray that you help us believers, help us not to be stubborn, not to be selfish, as of not to give the gospel that we were saved by. Lord, we don't deserve it. Lord, we are so filthy. Lord, your love and your grace, Lord, made us whole, made us new. And I just pray that as we pray, that you will give us a zeal, Lord. Give us a zeal to reach those that are lost, Lord, those that don't know you. I pray that you help us have a burden. I pray that you put that burden on people's hearts, Lord, to win those to you in our own city. Lord, I pray that you help us to glorify you today. I pray that you would just help us to stay pure vessels for you, Lord, stay clean, Lord, just to stay humble wanting to honor you in everything we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And to be in God's and to be with friends and fellow believers. So I'm glad to be here today. We're going to start our adult Sunday school hour by counting our Bibles. So if you have your Bible, let's raise it up so that we can get a count. And if you're Spouse is in the building with a copy of God's Word. If you could raise a hand for them as well. And once we've got the count, we will announce it and then plan to beat it next week. Thirty-two. Thirty-two Bibles. Good. And if by God's grace you were able to read your Bible every day last week, Raise your Bible for that as well. And let's also get a count if you were able to read your Bible every day. And let me encourage you to take some time every day and to get into God's Word. Whoa, let me put my other hand up for Portia. <clears throat> Very good. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from the Bible. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from God's word. The inward look, the outward look, the upward look from the old, old book. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from God's word. All right, if you have a cell phone, please make sure it's going to be silenced. As we get into the Bible today, please turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. As I was sitting there earlier, <clears throat> getting ready to come up here, I just had a thought of how much a privilege it is to have God's word and to be able to open it. And then the encouragement we find being able to have God's word and to open it together. Okay, and, and be in one accord as we open the book of all books. <clears throat> so I hope you're excited to be in the house of the Lord today, because I sure am. <clears throat> We're looking at Luke chapter 17. There is no life more worthy of careful beneficial study 
than the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> there is no one you will study in the annals of history that did greater works than the Lord Jesus Christ. He is God. He is God. He proved he is God by his omnipresence, where two or three are gathered together. There am I in the midst, Jesus said. He has proved that he is God by declaring himself the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. He has proved that he is the Son of God by his omniscience, all-knowing, reading the hearts of men. His omnipotence, he said after his resurrection, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So please understand, we are not just talking about a good teacher, a good rabbi, uh, a, a revolutionary with a cause. No, 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 no. We're talking about very God, the son of the highest. <clears throat> if you're going to study his life, you're going to study the supernatural. The Messiah had to come performing miracles, so we're studying the miracles of Jesus as part of our larger study of the life of Christ. And we've been on this now for about 10 years, about 10 years. The life of Christ, that is, not the miracles, but the life of Christ. And I don't know that we'll finish it in my ministry here. I hope to because I'm just enjoying the study of it, but it, there's just so much, and we're still at really the beginning of the life of Christ. There's so much more to go, um, but we're studying the miracles, and we're going slow, and one reason we're going slow is to show you that when you read your Bible, you need to slow down and really extract and glean. Reading the Bible is not a race. Okay, and you can, you can sit down and read the whole book in about a week and get nothing out of it. And so there is a need to really squeeze out what we can. Really get, get God's word into us. Let it soak in. How many of you like to marinate meat? Okay, and there's, there's a different taste when you let the marinade uh, 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 soak in, right? And you'll be a, t a different type of Christian when instead of just getting rinsed by the word, you get soaked in the word. Yeah, I need to be marinated by this book. And that's the type of Sunday school ministry we have here for our adult Sunday school class. So we're studying the healing of the 10 lepers in Luke chapter 17. The text is verse 11 through 19. Verses 11 through 19. So let's read the text and then we'll get into today's lesson. Scripture. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go shew yourselves or show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan another reason we know that Jesus is God um, he accepted and received worship every other good man in the Bible that was worshiped refused it but Jesus accepted it verse 17 and Jesus answering said were there not ten cleansed but where are the nine there are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger and he said unto him arise go thy way Thy faith hath made thee whole. So we've been in this miracle for several weeks. And I have already taught you the principle that we're going to introduce and then leave for this lesson. And that is the condition for the blessing. Would somebody raise their hand and tell me about the directive? 
the precept, the command. What was the condition for the blessing, according to our text? Um, Ms. Westbrook. So the command was go show yourselves to the priests. And the Bible says that as they went, they were cleansed. And so it was obedience that brought the cleansing or obedience that brought the blessing. About every day I pray for the blessing of God on my life. I want his blessing. I'm thirsty for his blessing. Um, I'm scared to try to operate in this crazy world without his blessing. I want his blessing. But if I'm interpreting this passage correctly, and I believe I am because it's consistent with other scripture, obedience brings the blessing. Or in this instance, obedience brought the cleansing. It was when they obeyed the command of Jesus that they were cleansed. Our blessings, how many of you want to be blessed? I often pray the prayer of Jabez on purpose, not as a vain repetition, but that's just become my prayer after really studying that passage of Jabez's prayer. And, and Jabez said, O oh Lord, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. That indeed gets me stirred up. Don't just bless me a little bit. That's like going to the ice cream shop and they put a little bit of ice cream on the cone and you're like, hey, give me some ice cream. Don't just give me some ice cream, but give me some ice cream indeed. Jabez said, don't just bless me, God. Bless me indeed. Jabez was an obedient man. You study that passage. The principle rings true throughout the word of God. I can scream and shout and, and, and exclaim that I want the blessings of God all I want, but if I'm a disobedient Christian, I can forget it. There are a certain amount of blessings that we all enjoy, even unsaved people. We get to breathe God's air, eat his food, and, and those types of things. But I'm talking about his special blessing. I want it. I'm telling you, I want it. I want it in my home. I want it in my ministry. I want it in, in my life. I want it. I want it. I want it. I better learn from these lepers who, as they went, they were cleansed. And so we can expect God to meet us with mercy. What was their cry uh, for in verse number 13? Have what on us? Mercy. We can be beneficiaries of his mercy if we're right with our duty. Yeah. If we do what we can obey, he will do what we cannot. And so... Leaving that, I've, I've emphasized that I think now for three or four weeks on purpose. Leaving that, I want us to look at the character of the blessing. There were two great um, blessings that came through the obedience of this precept. One was cleansing. The Bible says they were cleansed. The other was the canceling. And that was they were able to come back into society. The restrictions were canceled. Let's look first at the cleansing. In verse number uh, 14 at the end, it says, they were cleansed. The healing of leprosy is normally spoken of as being cleansed. If someone had leprosy, they were proclaimed unclean, not clean. And so to be healed of leprosy, the Bible says that they are Cleanse. Now, the word healed is used here as well. Look at verse 15. Do you see it? And one of them, when he saw that he was healed. But the usual language was cleansing. Lepers were unclean, hence cleansing was the word used for their healing. There's a lesson here about the commands of God. The commands of God are cleansing in nature. The commands of God have cleansing properties. In other words, you will never be defiled by obeying the commands of God. They'll only make you cleaner. And so obedience to God's orders is that which can never corrupt. 
It is disobedience to God's orders that corrupt. Second, I'd like us to see the canceling. The canceling. Not only did they have the great blessing of being cleansed from leprosy, but they had all of those crazy restrictions canceled out. And the priests would see that they were clean. Jesus did this. Please understand, Jesus did this. I know we said it was because of their obedience, but make no mistake, the same Jesus that can change your life and cleanse your life did this. He can cleanse you up and make you clean and whole today by his very blood. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Praise the Lord for that. But the canceling, all of these social restrictions, now they would be free to go wherever they wanted to go. They'd be free to intermingle again with their family, their friends, go back to work, go back to their trade, go back to whatever they were doing before. They could enjoy what they had not enjoyed for some time. It would be like getting out of prison and being free. Now, I hope I don't ever uh, experience that type of feeling, for I don't ever want to have to go to jail to have to experience what it's like to be free. But I can imagine someone spending, let's say, 10, 12, 15 years in jail or more. How about these individuals that 30 years later they find out they were innocent? That, that, you know, the forensics or whatever proved them innocent of the crime. And they're walking out 30 years later into free air. <laughs> and it's like, what are you going to do? And they talk about their favorite food or whatever they're going to do, and they can enjoy life again. That's how this man felt, because he obeyed the commands of God. Learn this. Obeying the commands of God are not restrictive like the devil wants some of you to believe. The devil wants some of you to believe that if you stop, uh, you get saved and you stop drinking, that that's restrictive. You get saved and you stop drugging. Uh, you get saved and you stop sleeping around like a dog in heat, that that's somehow restrictive and now you can't have fun and, and, and you're in slavery. No, the opposite of true. The world wants to taunt believers, telling us that these commands in the scriptures only restrict us from having a good time in life but that is not true the commands of God give freedom Jesus said that 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 the son would make you free indeed it is sin that enslaves it is sin that restricts it is sin that binds the commands of God give freedom Freedom. How would you feel if you were these ten lepers? I think I'd be happy. I think it would show. I think back to the most happy times in my life. Um, who, who could give me one of the happiest memories that they have in their life right now? Yes, sir. <laughs> but get, just to get out and to get away to travel to have a good time I, I think back to um, my wedding boy it was so exciting I think back to the day that I got saved I, I think back to the birth of my children Boy, I, I think back to the day I graduated from college. I was so tired. My brain was tired. I didn't want to learn nothing else. <laughs> my brain was tired. And I took my last final, and I ran back to the dorm, jumping up and down, screaming through the hallways, touching them, popping up the ceiling tiles, and just screaming. People thought, what's wrong with him? I was glad to be done with school. You think back to those special times in your life. How do you think these men felt? Only one gave thanks, according to our text. 
And so we enter now the praise for the miracle. The praise for the miracle. Over half of the recording of this miracle deals with the praise report. So God must have felt that that was awfully important about this miracle. That he donated so much space for it. And we're going to break down the praise for this miracle in several different ways. We're going to start with the promptness of this praise. The promptness of this praise. As we get closer and closer to Thanksgiving, and as we start thinking about that special holiday for us here in America, I think that this is appropriate that we're starting with the praise for this miracle. The promptness of the praise. Would you look with me at verse number 15 in your Bible? Eyes off everything but the scriptures. It says in verse 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And then verse 16, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him what? Thanks. Thanks. And he was a Samaritan. As soon as this man saw that he was healed, the praise started. That's commendable. Because we're often not that quick with our praise. Let me say that again. We are often, the, the blessing comes, and as I was reviewing my notes this morning, I thought about a big blessing, and I sat there convicted trying to remember if I gave God the praise right away. Now, I know I gave God the praise, but I had to stop and think, did I give it right away like this man? We want God to act quickly on our behalf, We want him to work quickly and to show up quickly. And so we, in turn, should praise quickly when he acts on our behalf. Matthew Henry said it this way, we ought to be speedy in our returns of praise and not defer them, lest time wear out the sense of mercy. In other words, time goes on and makes the praise or or makes the miracle smaller than it really was. We're thankful, but we're not that thankful because we've let time take some of the steam out of our our thanksgiving. And so don't let our lack of, of praise dim the greatness of those blessings. Mankind is always having trouble remembering the greatness of God's works. Wasn't that Israel? How many times did God have to remind them of what he did for them when he opened up that Red Sea? Now, our memories are sharp when somebody does us wrong. Our memories are sharp when somebody talks bad about us. Boy, if somebody owes you money, you know to the penny how much they owe you. But our memories are kind of short sometimes regarding our blessings. And so, what's the lesson here that we learn from the leper? Give him praise quickly. Give him thanksgiving quickly. We see the promptness in this praise. And then second, I want us to look at the person giving the praise. According to verse 15, check me out, 16 and 18, it says, and one of them, and then it, it, it further says he was a Samaritan, and then he's called in verse number 18, this stranger, this stranger. We're going to look at two things about this. First, the fact that he was alone, only one. And then second, he was an alien. He was alone and he was an alien. First of all, he was alone. Verse 15 says, one of them. How many lepers were cleansed? How many came back to give thanks? Is that an indictment upon Christians today? That about only 10% of us that are saved give God the praise that he deserves. How common is ungratefulness? About 90% of us are ungrateful. Yep. One of them. He gave glory to God. The commonness of ungratefulness. That only one 
return to give thanksgiving shows us how common ungratefulness is and how precious and, 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 and rare it is for someone to have a grateful heart. God's looking for somebody to bless, really bless indeed. He's going to hover over that 10% first because <laughs> he loves Thanksgiving. You get it into the Bible, we don't have time to go through it, but you read how much God loves Thanksgiving and wants Thanksgiving. And we want his blessing and 90% of us are ungrateful for what he's already done. We're looking for what we want him to do and he said, look what I've already done. Why don't you get thankful for that and maybe I'll do some more. It's very common to be ungrateful. When you honor God, another lesson is you will be a loner. You won't win popularity contests when you honor the Lord. You'll be many times in the minority, not the majority. So you got these nine guys, man, they're just excited. They're gone to go show themselves to the priest. They're clean and they're happy. They're thinking about who they're going to see, what they're going to do. The majority is gone. The minority is there, and he's the one that pleased God. Don't you ever be afraid to be in the minority for God. Yeah. Noah was in the minority. David was in the minority. Jeremiah was in the minority. God's choicest servants were often in the minority. You think of Noah. Are you willing to stand, and if need be, stand alone? Who do we need? Who do we really need but God? I know we love our friends and we want friendship and friendships are dear. But hey, I'm telling you, you won't amount to much for God if you're not willing to stand alone. And when you stand alone for God, you're not alone because he will stand with you. If God be for us. Now, do you believe that? God be for us. Who can be against us? And so you got this one leper standing alone, experiencing the favor that comes when you're not one of the nine, but you're one of the one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We got about 14 minutes before the morning service. I'm going to stop here. It's a natural place to stop. And we're going to pick this up again next week. I hope you're starting to see why it's good to, to go slow. Because you can read these verses and miss a whole lot of truth. And we need to, we need every bit of truth we can. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. We're going to close in prayer and then men, we're going to pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today and just pray that you'd help us as we continue to study these miracles Lord, to be more and more desirous of your blessing. And I thank you that as the God who performed miracles in Bible days, that you're still able and willing to perform miracles in our days. So help us, Lord, to learn these things and to apply them this week, starting today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for viewing our live stream service today.